everyone, my name is Dr. Mayro Salvador. I am the Executive Director of Pueblo Science. We are in unprecedented times. Given the school closures, we need to rethink our strategies to be able to keep delivering quality science education for our students. It is also a good opportunity to revisit and improve our approaches for the long term. Today, I will be sharing with you what we've seen and heard from educators around the world, including the Philippines, Canada, and Guyana, and also share my key takeaways on how to improve science education moving forward. Let me start by giving you a bit of a background of our organization. Pueblo Science is a Canadian charity that has a mission to advance STEM education across the world and create lasting solutions to poverty. We have a few programs and one of them has actually been to Jamaica and that is teachers training. We help teachers incorporate experiential learning in their classrooms. To do that, we also do a lot of kit design and we have over 250 science kits that have been deployed to different parts of the world. And recently, we started a program called Technofair where we mentor science projects that are aligned with community needs and student capabilities, as well as available resources. So the big question is, what is the impact of pandemic and schools? We all saw that schools were closed and so there was a disruption of learning. Everyone had to pivot to online learning. At Pueblo Science, we provided resources for the Philippine teachers when they asked for help. We also started two weekly programs on Facebook and YouTube because those are the two social media platforms where most of the teachers and students that we have met in the past are learning. And in remote areas of the Philippines as well as Guyana, radio or TV, these are one-hour programs, were aired. And in some cases, some USBs as well as worksheets that are printed and learning materials were distributed to students by the teachers. There were a lot of challenges that we saw with remote and online learning. Teachers were struggling to keep their students' attention. It is very easy for the students to go to other sites and play games instead of listening. Parents were stressed homeschooling their children in addition to doing their day jobs. Many students didn't have access to internet or mobile devices and so they were not able to participate in all this learning. And then there came the challenge of measuring and validating learning. Some exams were administered online and in the Philippines students were given flexible exam time for them to be able to set a time when they're able to go to the internet and then take the exam. Laboratory marks were removed because the schools were closed and there was a lot of schools that did mass promotion because they were unable to compute for the students' final semester grades. In some schools, they did a deferred grade where they gave students more time beyond the academic calendar to fulfill their requirements or drop the course. And the third scenario was some teachers used half of the term performance to compute a student's grade. In terms of science teaching, we saw that many schools and teachers were not ready. They had to create presentations and videos and so this gave additional stress to a lot of teachers. Experiential learning was completely stopped. There were no labs, no internships. At Pueblo Science, we usually take high school students as interns as well as undergraduates, but that had to stop. In some cases, students or teachers had to use what is readily available in their houses to do some experiments. And many parents had to look for alternative providers online because the educational system was not providing enough activities for their children to engage in. Some teachers were sending the materials to the students and were administering the experiential learning classes online. Others did dry labs where a lot of data analysis were done at home. Moving forward in September, there's a lot of plans on what they call blended learning, where the teachers will have to combine online learning as well as face-to-face -face learning. And that means for face-to-face -face learning, they have to cut down the number of students at a given time. And so the teachers will probably have to deliver the same class twice or three times, depending on the class sizes as well as the size of the classrooms. Pueblo Science have provided training for teachers online on how to create videos and how to engage their students by using materials that are locally available already. So here are my key takeaways on the future of STEM education. I believe that hands-on learning is key to a student engagement and also we need to integrate all the disciplines when we're teaching. We don't have to segregate chemistry, physics, biology, engineering on its own because real-world problems are solved by integrating all the knowledge that you accumulate from all these disciplines. 
we also need to make this experiential learning community relevant. I also like the project-based learning approach. It builds creativity, innovation, problem-solving, critical thinking skills, collaboration, and leadership. It also encourages after-school learning. And finally, because our students are now always online, so we have to find and create online resources that are able to engage our students when discussing topics or if they want to do further learning outside of school hours. Thank you very much, everyone. We are always looking for ways to be able to work with teachers and students here in Jamaica again. So if you have ideas, please feel free to reach out. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the Association of Science Teachers in Jamaica, as well as the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for inviting me. Till next time.